Welcome back to Desert Wood Days, and Big Marla's here with Matt Kemp. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's been going on with you out there? You miss Big Marla? Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Hershey syrup. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. You remember the syrup. <laughs> yeah. And that poor kid coming back just covered in just kiss marks. Like, yeah, that was pretty fun. <laughs> no, that was... Pizza Shop was a fun movie. Yes, yes. And I just enjoyed the character, Big Marla. Yeah. So we figured Big Marla was going to host the show today. Why not? Perfect person. <laughs> so, Matt Camp, you're an actor. You've worked in a um, few films here in the Valley. Yes. Um, one of them being Pizza Shop. Right. And I remember your characters there. And the last one you worked in was Murder Muse. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, right around that time, I think that was pretty much the last things I was acting in, yeah. Okay, when was it that you decided that you wanted to act, to get into the industry? I would say it's probably about 1999. Mm -hmm. I think I just got out here, and I was actually working at a pizza place and had met a guy that had said he was a writer and does all this stuff. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool, and he'd read, or he'd bring all these scripts, and he was here, check this out. And I, was, I hate reading. You know, I don't. You know, our mothers, our parents told us don't run into strange people. Okay, so you ran into someone making pizzas. Yeah, yeah. And writing scripts at the same time. I grew up in the pizza <laughs> business too. Yeah. So and then yeah, reading his scripts and just reading how like it's written in script form, uh -huh. I actually was able to read and enjoy reading again. So I was like, oh well, this is kind of fun. And then reading what he was doing, I was like, that's neat. I want to do this. So I started with him kind of and then families move and people go do other things and I just dabbled in a bunch of different stuff I tried doing stand-up comedy and really? things like that and then I saw there was an ad for pizza or you know pizza shop the movie okay. and I was like well I know about pizza I love pizza <laughs> why not I want to try this acting thing so and it was really cool you know meeting yeah. and seeing how the audition process worked because I right. you know I've only been on one other audition before that and I went in to be so who was your character in the in pizza shop i was greg greg yeah the um driver gets moved up into the management position okay. so then the drivers hate him and <laughs> yeah but he's like whatever i gotta do what i gotta do and then i also played um uh the dj okay so you're a dj also yeah and i was actually a dj and karaoke host in real life also so oh, I, that was perfect. my stuff it's like all right yeah so i just like doing the things that i've done i guess that's awesome so do you see acting as a field that you, you want to continue to stay in? Yes and no. I like the acting part because it's you come in, you take direction, you do what you're going to do, mm -hmm. and it's it's fun. But at the same time, I don't really – I've learned to love what's behind the, behind the camera as well. I, the yeah, camera. I like doing the grip work, holding things, just creating the sets, and right. just a bunch of different stuff. Those There's are, so much to and it. And those are very important roles because without – you guys, we would be able to do what we do in front of the camera. And I learned that through Pizza Shop, actually, because yeah. I saw how everything went. I was like, oh, well, this is really cool. I'm like, oh, that's how it works. And, that is cool. you know, getting the glimpse behind of what actually takes to put everything together. I love what you're saying, Matt, because we, when, when I have actors sitting here on the couch, I like for them to give out advice to aspiring actors and tell them, tell them how not to make the mistakes that they made. Right. And, and, and what you're saying is so true. A lot of times people go on set, whether they're extra, featured extra, whatever, and instead of sitting there soaking in everything, observing, they're busy talking, eating, or whatever. Yeah, this. But you, <laughs> yeah, so let's Here not forget I am. this. Yes. Here I am. You did the right thing because that taught you where, that showed you where you wanted to be. Yes. Yeah. And it was, like I said, it was just eye opening because you don't think all this goes into it. 
and like I said, learning from all the people that are around. I, I maybe my multi personalities everywhere, just like, oh, I'm gonna be that and that and that and that. And that. <laughs> like we can't be all. That's what it takes a team right. to do. But it's it's like putting the plan together, and you know what right. you're doing. It's fun. That is awesome. So what's the what was the film that you just finished filming? That you who was your character in that film? I was in the Murder Muse, mm -hmm. and I played two and a half characters in that one so that's once again it was fun getting every being different people oh. and you know, just shaving something here or there yeah. or putting on lipstick <laughs> so, so you like that doing the different things and i mean not just being stuck in one box yeah i yeah i think i want to be bad guy though that's you want to be a bad yeah guy? i just i want to yeah have you done any westerns no, 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 I can see you doing Western. Oh, that, I hear I look like a cowboy, and I, yeah. I'm sure I can sound like it. So, but I usually try not to talk that way. <laughs> Where are you originally from? Chicago. Oh, okay. And yeah. how long have you been here in Arizona? Twenty two years now. Oh, so you one of us now? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> I accumulated. My blood's gotten thinner and everything. Yeah. Fifty degrees. It's like. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'd be sitting there hot, and they talking about it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good to me. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you've done a few movies. So I know that you have something new that you're working on, but we're going to talk about that after a commercial break. But um, what I'd like to ask you is what advice would you give to a Matt that's starting where, just starting off? Like a young Matt? Yes. Like 20, something like that? Yes. Um, do, uh, the same thing that I kind of did, just take opportunities that you can. I mean, look around and see uh, and listen around to people, mm -hmm. listen to advice that people give you stuff. I was a bartender too. Mm -hmm. So I gave a lot of advice and mm -hmm. I listened to a lot of people advise me on different things. And then the key word is listening. Yeah. That listening is so important to everything anymore. It sure Cause it, is. how do you understand if you can't hear it? <laughs> right. And the, it's still that old saying, listen to your elders. Exactly. Yeah. They'll teach you a lot because right. they know they've already done it. And it probably made it easier for you along the way. That's true. So, Matt, you started a new business. Yeah, we've been for about two years now, right before COVID hit. We started a thing called Star Kids Studios. Star Kids Studios? Yeah. Okay. And what it does, it teaches kids all the different aspects, like what we were just talking about, of everything pretty much film-related as far as writing. Because what we were saying, everyone sees us, but right. they don't see all of them. Right. which is the lighting, the camera setting, mm -hmm. the guy behind here, the guy holding this, the guy that does all this. I mean, there's lots of people that put all this together. And that's jobs that when I went to high school, I never knew anything about right. that. There's drama. And I wasn't going to be a theater person. Plus, right. I don't remember things And it well. gives them that opportunity to see that, hey, I don't, I'm not good with lighting. I, I don't want to sit here and do sound. I mean, it gives them an opportunity to see, to weed out the things that they're not comfortable with or don't want to do as well. Right. And what we do is we team up kids that want to do this with professionals that are locally that do this, oh. that are in the field. So, and that's what I think is so beneficial. I mean, especially with the way computers and things right. are now, these kids already know how to run things sure, better than we do. Sure so they're do. like, that's not how you do it. So, they I sure mean. They sure do. They can show you. I was asking the um, kid the other day, show me how to TikTok. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they show me and I get home, I forget. <laughs> yeah, I, I, TikTok, I don't know, but I know we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook. Um, yeah, like I said, there's probably, I think they're, we're working on a TikTok um, more too. And um, it's, so they're setting up their own profiles. Um, you, you, do you work with them on setting on their social media? Uh, that's what the teachers and then we'll teach it because we have a social media um, guy that does our stuff and he's oh, going to okay. come in and teach the kids. This is how you would set up your social media. If you're going to do it, these are the things to look for. These are the things that are beneficial. These are the things to stay away from. Like we talked about, right. what mistakes to try to eliminate so it. How early. many children do you work with at a time? Uh, right now, the classes have been small just because of everyone trying to keep everything um, at COVID. Yeah. COVID state regulations yes. and such and so what we're working on is a couple different like holiday shows oh. we did last year we we're working on a christmas catastrophe which was a musical written and pretty much all original music and stuff done by my fiance she writes music she oh, okay. choreographs she does it all she's wow. the real backbone behind star kids wow. yeah she's constantly working i wake up in the morning she's on the computer trying to get stuff i go to bed she's <laughs> so she does a lot of so hard that's work a, um 
a huge part of filmmaking also is getting your music and is that something that she's teaching at your school as well yep yep we're looking at you know doing more dance classes and we have people that want to do that with local kids what we had mm -hmm. prior like um there's a couple that we had with our other groups that are going to teach more dance and mm -hmm. like in studio time we worked with sun studios uh -huh. they have the um sound recording booths and stuff oh, there yeah so yes. Well, yes. everyone that so do you guys have an actual studio no not yet not yet okay. yeah we've been we have sp office space that we work out of for like going over scripts and stuff like that or oh, okay. like for the um for the classes and such oh, okay. so how do you get your teachers are they vol on a volunteer basis or? uh some have volunteered yeah and then when we classes are up and running they get paid out of it as well oh. so it's it put everybody to work. That's pretty much what we want to do. So how do how do children or parents find out about you that may want their, their children to get involved in this? They can do uh, starkidstudios.com. We have the website and they have, um, there's an Instagram of it also. And like I said, I'm not sure. I think they started a TikTok on it, but I'm not positive on but that. But if they well. don't know about Star Kids, how would someone find out about you? I mean, do you guys, um, I mean, marketing promote the business how, how are people I've, finding out how are I they finding you believe we've gone through kids casting as well dot com okay. and reached out with a bunch of those i know that she's advertised that's the, the stuff so i don't know and then yeah. of all that stuff that's the parts that with the computer thing that's why i need somebody teaching me how to do that <laughs> I, i'm the set decorator and all those things you know that's the one thing i've never done is so how long is a program uh, right now, I think she was doing four weeks is what we're doing for our rehearsals oh. as far as getting the um, stuff going. We have something going on of the Desert Ridge still. Uh -huh. We're looking to do at um, the Black Friday. Okay. So Friday and Saturday up there. And like I said, with more information, we'll have later on too coming. Okay. So after your children, I keep saying children, <laughs> your young adults, <laughs> then I'm not no child. <laughs> after they've gone through, say, um, let's say writing or dancing, whatever, do they do a showcase at the end of their four weeks? That's what she had put together when we were doing all these uh, programs. Like we had a summer program mm -hmm. doing the same sort of thing. Yeah. You learn all of it and then they put the kids together to put on some kind of, you know, with everyone's talents going into it, you know, so they're acting and singing. And so have you been able to have a showcase yet since COVID hit? Not yet, no. Okay, That's what we're still working on rehearsals. Our rehearsals. Okay. Yeah, prior to COVID, we were just starting. So oh, okay. that's where we're enlisting kids and starting to figure out what, how we're going to do this, throw it all together. And, you know, otherwise, it just started off with a couple of cameras, like, and we had to go buy the lighting and everything. So, but a lot of time and effort in it, buying the editing computer sure. and stuff. So, sure. Um, I love what you're doing. Thank you. I, I really do because, you know, what a lot of times people have this dream to do filmmaking or um, something that's in the industry, but they don't know how to get started. Exactly. And I'm sure, I mean, is your is there an age limit on what you're doing um, with the children, young adults? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, and that's, the, is we weren't going to really go like above 16 because then they're already really busy with everything else. Uh -huh. I mean, with high school and then usually extracurricular sports. And then we were per trying to stay at least like five and above. Because oh, okay. toddlers, you know, those, right. that's have you had, a lot uh, of Have pressure. you had five-year-olds so far? Uh, we have one, yeah, She's and, and she's an acrobatic. And it's, well, working with kids and animals, as they say, is always the hardest thing. Yes. So it takes a lot of patience and, you know, of it's just a training, I guess you would say, but it's, well, you, know, you got to it, it takes, work. sometimes it takes more patience than grown folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, sometimes I think it'd be easier to get the kids to do it than adults. So where, where do you see, um... Star camps? Star kids. Star kids in five years. Uh, five years from now, we'd probably have about seven years in going. I think that we're, our overall goals would be to actually have something, you know, California, Nevada, yeah. New Mexico, set up to different areas and then have them put on challenges with each other and stuff like that, where that would be that TikTok thing. Right. Where, and then have it just be fun to have new showcases. The one thing that I think had gotten me to this was, everything's being remade constantly mm -hmm. then kids come up with <laughs> crazy ideas yes, all the they time do. so i mean why not tap that market and see what they're coming up with next i mean right. those among us little things are i right. mean those our youth is what's bringing out all this new stuff that's out here right it was such a pleasure having you here today thank you
And um, I believe you, what, where can we find you on face on, on social media? I would say Star Kids Studios is the best place to get okay. a hold of a lot. And then they'll do all the media stuff for Sounds me. I, I don't touch the computer. Sounds great. It was such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here today at Desert Wood Days. And we will catch you next time. Thank